Hello, I am Radagast at your service. So, I think I'm going to have a little fun tonight. Um, this is called Magical Living and Thinking Keys to Health. I'm going to try and tie it all in together. Um, my own little, my path is a ver has always been very non traditional. Um, it started, I guess, looking at the traditional especially through ceremonial magic, ceremonial magic and uh, spells and stuff like that, was a pretty quick um, um, turn off for me personally, because I could see the ego, the very egoic nature of it. And also around my time of delving into that, the Seth material came out. And uh, the Seth material was one of the most profound metaphysical works released in modern times. Um, speaking to a left-brained, um, audience to take to open them up it was brilliant work and once i saw the inherent power in us just in existing and knowing who we were um the, the whole especially a lot of the you know ceremonial magic um is very much involved in opening up portals and um with and like hoping for the best and it just uh, i see it as uh tampering with forces that um, are probably <clears throat> best left untapped unless there's some real agreement with others and you know what you're doing. Um, I just, you know, it's kind of like the Ouija board. You just, it's, you know, you're opening up a, a hole in the equivalent of, of sea world, you know, and you, and you might get a, you know, a pretty fish and you might get a barracuda. <laughs> you don't know, you might get a, you might get a great white so um, anyway, I just saw I didn't see any value in that. So I'm more into what uh, is kind of like um, I would call passive magic. Passive magic is really about understanding the Tao or the ways or the way of nature, and working with those currents. Whether it's working with you know the cycle, the main cycles of the moon, which is the waning and the waxing, knowing how that might tie into your hair. Like if you have very thick hair and you wish. It would be maybe just a little less aggressive. Cutting your hair on a waning moon can assist with that. Where meanwhile, if you would like your hair to thicken, um, you're cutting it on the waxing moon. I have cut my hair on the waxing moon almost exclusively. Um, and at 62, between the genes and good practices, it seems to be working. Um, even the colors coming back after getting out of relationship, we'll see if the trend continues. So, um, Part of magical living, I really, for me, has involved herbs, crystals, essential oils, knowing um, the basics of traditional Chinese medicine as far as the meridian system, the organs they work with, and the energies and consciousness associated with those organs. And, and then also we're just working with uh, trance states for ways of um, being involved in your health because a trance state allows you to ac actually access your the autonomous body, that part of you that breathes for you, beats your lungs, digests your food, that's the part that often you have to deal with when you're ill. So um, being able to get into enough, enough of a trance state to get information from that aspect of your being is really profound. And then there's the chakras um, as part of health. And then there's ways of working with runes and tarot as what I call decoders. Um, and in the case of runes, you also have a, you have fairly powerful uh, magical tools. And let's one more time remind ourselves that this is a powerful tool, and it invites blessings. It's very grounding. All those blessings are grounded. Um, it's also a form of a an antler. It's a this is a, the, both defensive and gathering of blessings. And uh, and I can you might remember the evil. <laughs> In quotes, inversion of it. There we go. That's the uh, that's the way they wanted us to embrace it, so we wouldn't get any blessings and have basically everything upside down. And also, it negates protection. So that's it. That's our baby. Algae or eel. It's also a Z sound. So you know. Um, so. So that's one sign of like that's the runes. Now, of course, the, what I call them decoders is because 
rather a lot of people oh tell me my future um if you know anything about the dynamics of any now point into the future you realize it's quite dynamic and fluid and as a fluid it can bleed it can bleed i know that wasn't clear <clears throat> and so really using divinatory tools for me is really like kind of going up in a fire tower when you have a bunch of paths in the forest and from the fire tower you can get a fair amount of intelligence including who might even be on those roads at that time so i tend to um, use divinatory tools to examine situations almost like a remote viewing um you know whether it was make when i started my videos my own getting my own okay about my involvement in the team um i mean the, these are whole things where i don't say oh tell me the future i just ask the runes i concentrate on what i would like to have co either confirmation or expansion um anything actually and and then i you know hold that thought and go into my rune bag and stir them and stir them and till it feels right and then I lift one out and I look at it and that will give me my intel on on what on the situation around the question and I have been greatly guided at all times um, I mean I've even had major moves that were I mean so many plans were laid and then I did a, a really involved rune cast which is taking all the runes and throwing them out and watch how, what story they tell by how they link and where they are, what's in the center of the story, what's on the periphery. And uh, I was able to identify very real blockages, even, to, even down to the names, because sometimes the runes could represent names by their positioning. It's about, it's, it's really about having them talk to you. It's not about having, you know, having, lining up their meaning so much as knowing their meaning and then as they get cast how these meanings synthesize into a story that's why i don't use tarot tarot doesn't talk to me like when other people do tarot i can see they get a story from how the cards interact i don't get a story from tarot i get a story from the runes so that's why i'm <clears throat> a rune reader um so with er so keys to health magical living um, like my, I you know, like myself at 62, and Ron, I think it was at 68, Ron Van Dyke. Neither one of us go to doctors. Um, I mean, I went to a doctor for a while because I had a recurring back injury, and treating it with um, Vicodin worked for me. I was, I stayed on a, on the exact same dosage for years. I actually took it every day for years, but the same dosage. Um, and after two days. The, the dosage has no you know buzz effect so it really it actually very often i would feel tired and after the codeine i'd be taking steps two at a time because my muscles relaxed i was out of pain um it actually became um an uplifter for me because it had it had the, the opiate only relieved pain it had no it had no dulling effect on me but um that was the only reason i had a doctor for years and then when i decided just to completely release all attachments to people and things um, and substances um, I didn't need her anymore because I only really needed her to write <clears throat> and um, I got bit by I seem to have a self-diagnosed Lyme disease um, two summers ago and um, did that also on my own and that was through shamanic exp that was a very deep shamanic experience because the high fevers knocked me unconscious sometimes for I have no idea I was again I was delirious for a few days but that, but I I knew I was getting better the whole time and um, and I, those really high fevers helped me to cook out a lot of the bacteria and a constant um, regimen this is something I take Orego Max it's just basically oregano and I guess a few other things, but the oregano is a nice scavenger for uh, remaining things that don't get cooked out. <clears throat> um, I'm not suggesting anybody do that because um, the fever is an interesting thing in the body. If I really feel that if there's no if there's no psychological uh, panic. In, in the process, the, when the fever gets to a certain point where the organs are in danger because of the heat, 
that the body has a feedback loop and it will cut it. That's what I, that's what, was, what I experienced. But if anybody was ever in any concern, any kind of fear where you're redress, adre, uh, releasing adrenaline, adrenaline spoils the communication. And that kind of um, fine communication from the organs communicating that something is wrong gets interrupted because adrenaline already tells the body there's something wrong. So um, <clears throat> it's, you know, it was a path I took and it's because I had total confidence in it. Um, so any, whatever system of um, medicine you believe in is the one you should follow because I feel that's a holistic path. <clears throat> holistic for me is spelled with a W. The other one that's spelled with an H has a hole in it in a lot of ways. Holistic is in, would consider anything. If somebody's you know really ill, you would certainly consider antibiotics if that would be the thing that would change everything instantly. Um, my, I mean, and it's, there are certain cases where other people would offer antibiotics, and I might opt not to, or some other form of addressing that issue. Um, again, you have to you have to be in your comfort zone because that's where you'll be at enough ease to heal. If you, if you think you're doing something because it's the right thing, but you have anxiety over it, you're, gonna, you're really gonna mess things up. That's what, like even when I said about my accepting my high fevers, I was in such peace with it that I knew I was safe. Not being at peace would, would have made it a very dangerous thing and something I probably could have hurt my heart or something because I would have cooked it had I been playing that way. And then of course I could have got myself in trouble and you know, emergency rooms and all of that. I mean, that's one of the main reasons I also like to keep care for myself and even willing to die in my own bed is just to stay out of that system. But other people might feel they're glad that system is there. And um, I mean, if, I, if I'm in a bad situation and uh, basically you carry me in in two separate stretchers, yeah, I'll be glad for that. <clears throat> so, um, where was it? Oh yeah, traditional Chinese medicine is very helpful because um, sometimes you have uh, I'll have a pain somewhere and then I you know and I look at it and I realize it's along along a meridian line and just releasing the energy in that um, helps. Of course, now with me being a body worker <clears throat> and having done shiatsu, I and also having gone into enough trance states, I now see how the meridians affect the tissue in the area also, and it's really more of a uh, of a localized area and that you can actually <clears throat> help the energy move through meridians by relieving tension in the tissue that surrounds them that often become sympathetic with it. <clears throat> Herb. So herbs and herbs have always been a way to, uh, for me to uh, address it. I did study them scientifically so I knew what all the <clears throat> various chemicals were in them and it, it, it was almost it was like pharmacopoeia, where you knew the herbs you were using based on their medicinal qualities. But there's a whole level of, of herbal study that is about what planets rule them and their energies. And, um, and then also there's the doctrine of signature, like my, my hair remedy, for, for uh, and I've had people grow back hair, including myself, um, was looking at yarrow leaves and how um, they look like hair almost. And then of course the, the seed heads and a seed head would correspond with head. So I'd make a, a, a tea of the leaves and the head and <clears throat> decoct that and then I would mix that half with witch hazel because witch hazel is a good scalp stimulant. So this half and I, then I would use that as a rinse. I would shampoo, do the rinse, put in my uh, conditioner with the rinse and then take them out. And sure enough, I mean, it, it, you know, and that was, all, that was through doctrine of sig signature, not the chemicals that I knew were in the leaf. And doctrine of signature is that uh, through certain cues or um, morphology of, of a plant that you see some affiliation. Um, if you cut a carrot, you know, if you have a long carrot and you cut it and you look at it, it looks like the iris of an eye. So there's the doctrine of signature for the eye. Kidney beans are good for the kidneys. So you have, those are various doctrines of signature as, as example. So, so part, a big part of how I use herbs is much more magically and energetically, like using a Mars herb to move things along. Actually, there's a small Mars herb called Woodruff that I sometimes will put in my hair, a remedy 
only as, and this is actually something that is in um, Chinese herb uh, combining, where some of the herbs that you put in, you don't, you put in to either complement the the herbs that are kind of doing the, the point work, or you'd use them in a, in a support way. And I, woodruff is considered a Mars herb. So Mars is energizing. And, um, but it, it doesn't, it's not like a real, like aggressive, like pepper and cinnamon or Mars. You know, I mean, you can really see the penetrating nature of that. Um, peppermint's really a mercury because it's hot and cold, but it has like a, you know, has like a Martian thing. So it might be mercury and, mercury and Aries would be the energy. Uh, but I add woodruff into the, into the hair mixture sometimes because I'm looking to energize because, you know, sometimes you're looking at the scalp, it's kind of going dead. So that Mars energy helps to revitalize it. So again, I'm not using it for an even doctrine of signature. I'm using it because it's a Mars herb that's not particularly aggressive, can blend in without affecting anything, but still lend that energy. So this is, you know, again, this is all the uh, um, ways of just blending things and finding um, remedies for myself. I mean, I've come up, I also have a sunburn remedy, but um, that not only works very well. One time a friend of mine um, got drunk on the beach um, with his very white pale skin. And when we left the day, I could tell this is a man who would be out of work for a few days and he was. And I offered him a whole bottle of my sunburn remedy. And of course, as even, you know, I don't push myself on people. People know who I am, and so he goes, oh, the wizard's giving me something, here. And he puts them on his hand, and he splashed it on his arm, and he handed me back the bottle. The next time I saw him, he had confirmed that he had been sick for days, and he said the only part of his body that didn't hurt him was the arm that he put the stuff on. And then two people go, oh, why don't you sell it? It doesn't, I mean, it's funny, this living stuff doesn't lend to commercializing. Any way you stabilize something to have a shelf life kills it. Um, this, you know, herb, herb stuff is meant to be dynamic and living. It's, that's where it's, where the intelligence comes. The moment something gets mass marketed, so much of the intelligence gets, it gets killed to make it a stable product because it's stable because it's dead. When it's alive, it's going to go through its process from living to decaying. Um, and a nice thing about the hair thing, when you mix it in with the uh, witch hazel, it, it does decay a little a bit it get, and it gets a little acidic. And that makes it even better for the scalp because the uh, skin likes about, a, especially the scalp likes about a, anywhere from 5.5 to 6.5 pH. And so the fact that it gets a little acetic, as in acetic acid in vinegar, um, and it smells a little vinegary, that's, it actually has a greater, uh, it works better when it gets a little bit older and ferments a little bit because that's actually what happens, it ferments. But you can use it fresh. And some people would only use it fresh because aesthetically it's the only way they could use it. Um, crystals. Crystals are a huge part of, of um, I mean, I, I, crystal, really studying crystals, um, and there's some, good, there's some good books, although one of the best books is no longer in print. It was um, by Gurudas. It was called Vibra uh, Gem Elixirs and Vibrational Healing, Volume 1. And they would tell you the various, um, the, you know, the various organs and system, circulatory, immune system, um, neuro, you know, nervous system that stones had an affinity for. And when you kind of put it together and you realize, you know, this whole living organism of Gaia and the, the crystals um, hold um, information for various constructs in our body. And um, so, like for the heart, you know, the, the heart, um, ruby and emerald are very nice ones. And I have... This is one of my favorite pieces I picked up. This is a this is a, a raw ruby, and it's cut from a, natu a natural hexagonal um, tube, and they cut them off. And it's only ten dollars, and uh, it's really I mean I really you know it's you know it's not the, the kind of rubies you're used to. It's raw, but it has a very good function. Heart. This is also another. Here are two cases of um, non a crystal emerald. Okay. I mean, I have, I have not very nice emeralds, but it's just nice to be able to have these things around. Here's a nice chunk of aquamarine. Now, this is for the heart. Emerald and um, emerald and uh, ruby are very good heart. Now, ruby is also good for the root chakra. And here's um, a nice, very pale piece of aquamarine, which is associated with the thymus and, uh, and uh, immune system. 
But I mean, just with um, one of the best first aids, sometimes I'll, I'll get like a real puckering in my third chakra or in the, in the pit of your stomach if you're not chakra. If you, even if you've heard them go, oh please. Um, but one of the quickest ways of getting rid of any kind of knot in my stomach, because that is the area that's usually yellow in, in uh, nature, is a piece of citrine. And I happen to like the, this one. It's like, you know, it's got it's got its matrix and then it's got this little cluster here. And they're nice to kind of like little cleansers around the room. But what I like about a science like this is that when I have something going on in the pit of my stomach, I just put it there. And, and I just, you know, I lay back and I place it. And usually in a minute, the whole pit starts to unwind. I like these because I find that when it comes to dealing with the... Um, especially with that pit to the stomach pain, laying um, a regular kind of um, uh, crystal citrine that you know, actually has like a head on it, like a regular crystal, you know, kind of like this. Um, it tends to point up, and I find that really when you um, have that pit thing, you really want the business end of, of the uh, crystals pointing down. And a single, uh, the little round pieces like tumbled citrine, they're nice too. But I really find that these are re really quick because the energy is more coherent because of the, because they have the crystal tips on them. Um, a nice energizing stone is um, is a smoky quartz. This is a really beautiful piece that another magical friend of mine gave to me. But this is when I got off. I got off the beach on Long Island somewhere. They have, they have a lot of. Uh, um, citrine and a smoke, natural smoky quartz to just roll up on the beach. And I, I like these. One time I had a big piece. I broke it in half and <clears throat> put it by my bottom of my feet and I went into a really good meditation. The only problem is almost from the moment I started the meditation until I removed those from the bottom of my feet, I just had them pointed, it had a Viagra reaction. I mean, I, I, after an hour I had to stop. I was in pain. It was like crazy energy. So... <laughs> Just a little uh, anecdote there. Um, another nice thing, especially if you have stomach, is moonstone. This is a nice big moonstone. Now, of course, some of the nice ones are just more of the, you know, that pale color. This one has some of the dark, but this is a very sweet moonstone. And I used it the other night. I had something going on in my stomach and uh, worked very quickly. A little sip here. Then of course there's essential oils, and um, the, the basic essential lavender. Of course, if you, probably, if you may be bored with the scent, but boy, I think there's probably a few few things that are better to put on a cut as far as healing it up real quick. And, and if you're not concerned about infection, you wash it out naturally. Um, if you're a person who's more concerned about infection, tea tree um, oil is um, will tr treat just about anything that can get it that it can get in a wound. And of course, if you're into one, you know, bacitrace and all the other stuff, I mean, if that's your thing, go for it. I was just, but I was kind of talking about more alternative things. Um, we kind of are pretty well schooled in what the over the counter stuff is. <clears throat> Trans states, yeah, so chakras. Now, chakras apparently have gotten a little, a little controversial because they're talking about they could be a foreign installation. They could be. Um, but mo most, there's no doubt that they're portals. And so, they, you know, they're portals to another dimension, or you know, the next dimension up where the energy kind of channels into us. And so my, um, my wisdom to you regarding the chakras, as, as I apply it to myself, is they're portals. All portals need to be managed. And so that brings you into a, you know, a greater awareness that you have Ch chakras, one, two, three. You know, you, I, please look it up. I mean, rather than me explain what chakras are, just Google it, and just you know that'll give you the the basic um, um, layout. Because I'm really talking a little bit to people who know this, and I'm trying to get out of the dogma. I really feel that almost everything in the new age, because the new age became marketing, so any any way to take something that could be explained simply wasn't good for marketing, it's not good for more books. So the more we can complicate it, and then we lay out this, and then you have the next revelation that comes, you know, and I, part of what I'm doing, I've, I mean, I've, you know, been monitoring that and using, you know, learning what I can from it. 
but the whole thing is to it has to be util to me what's the utility of it and going off into into crazy left brain stuff and then tripping off into the right brain and neither one of them synthesizing anything um, I can I feel has been a lot of uh, it's been very masturbatory as far as uh, producing anything um, and so I just I try to cut through and all the tradition and stuff and I'm just hoping anybody has maybe heard of the chakras has an idea of you know one at the base one around your belly button one in your solar plexus one at your heart thymus is a favorite of mine but that's a trend that's a that's a intermediate chakra so the next chakra would be your throat heart throat third eye and the crown and um, and then they you know they have different colors with them and of course if a stone has the color of a chakra you can expect some alignment just from the color spectrum of the stone but then you know a stone like ruby a red stone which would clearly have a red chakra impact because of its redness and it has that energizing but it is primarily a heart stone and it's associated with the heart chakra. Um, emerald's a little more, a little more obvious because it's green, and green usually affiliates with the with the heart. And and green jade has a very nice heart effect. But green jade also has a um, um, an, uh, a mineral in it called nephrite. And yes, jade has a very good effect on the kidneys, especially the adrenals, because um, it's it's soothing for the adrenals. And anything that's soothing for the adrenals and not producing adrenaline is soothing for the heart. So you can see the synergy of um, how one supports the other. <clears throat> and then interesting, even from Chinese medicine, heart is fire and the kidneys are water. So you know you have a, you have the, those kind of you know each one dampens the other. It's kind of you know too much fire is definitely not good for water, and water is definitely will dampen fire spirit but each one of them can contain the other. That's the whole thing. It's about the balance. And, and even in, as you see this balance between something like fire and water, you start to come to the idea of homeostasis and even how we deal with evil or the darkness and how at, at, at some level it is playing, there's a, there's a balance of it where it leans and it tests and it um, um, looks looks for opening is actually testing your it really darkness in many ways is testing the immune system of course the immune system is a thymus and aquamarine that is the immune system stone because it, it's blue and green you know the wisdom of the heart with the will and the and the ability to voice what needs to be done with that heart energy speaking from the heart to me is what is what um it represents as a stone because also it's a mercury stone Mercury's communication, so you would have even you know you'd have that affiliation with the voice, but the green roots it, the voice in the heart, because the voice can just be pure will. <clears throat> I seem to be losing my throat here, which is just from not getting enough rest. We've been keeping very busy, uh, between being on the team, answering, and then also I mean I have a, well I have a fair amount of comments that I try to keep up on with the people who show a real interest. And um, so I just, I sleep when I can, but I just doesn't seem to be working so well. Um, so tie, so again, how does this tie into your health? It's by being, I feel living in a more, in, in this very in, integrated where we, it's not like the body stinks and spirit is good or vice versa. It's, it's about really growing into spiritual consciousness from a body centered understanding i mean what we're doing here what our species is doing is taking a very basic grounded consciousness and rising it into the fourth and fifth dimensional consciousness in as 3d beings i mean this isn't about escaping 3d this is about transmuting it by by bringing in fourth dimensional consciousness that allows us to envision a future because if you because now um, it's really because the future in the fourth dimension is right there so as soon as you kind of so when you can kind of see it right there it makes you say oh um, it's not here yet you know it's going to take my hands but it's because of my fourth dimensional awareness I can see it's right there and and now we'll change the world 
and that is really and the, and through working with um, stones. I mean, even just just having a few crystals around and just holding them in your hand, just play with them. Get get that because they're coherent. That's the most important thing. Is what um, this the crystals are lattices of very coherent energy, and that's why they work so well with the organs because the organs are you know very settled into a certain place and doing a specific task so th they can be kind of you know there's a there's a kind of a, a lock in of performance there growing out but still a basic performance level things like flower essences especially the Bach flower essences but there's a whole um ones beyond that that really reach it but <clears throat> i would say in the current state of the world anybody who's experiencing any kind of confusion Please Google Bach flower essences. I think there's 30, 30 something, 38, I think, basic uh, of their flower essences, and they're all based on psychological types. And because flower essences, rather than being these coherent, steady patterns like, like our organs are, fla um, <clears throat> flower essences deal with states of consciousness. And so you know, the, there were different flower essences for, for timid people, for aggressive people, for people who have morbid thoughts. Thoughts, the, it's, I mean, and they really are amazingly effective. A few times I've had, a, you know, certain things lean a certain way and what, olive is a good strengthener. Um, and I, that's, actually, I probably should get some olive. I have it somewhere because that's what I actually feel that I need right now at this time is olive. Good call, Rat. Um, so that's playing with some of this stuff, incorporating into your life can have very profound shifts in subtle ways where it's not like where all of a sudden you go bang, it's you just grow into it. It's almost like you didn't really, I mean, unless you measured your height, you didn't really feel yourself growing, but you did. Um, conversely, losing or gaining weight can be like that. And you know, when they look down, it's like, oh, where did I go? Or how did that get here? You know. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, where am I going? Uh, I'm on third. Okay, we gotta wrap this up. So this is my little, my little magical talk. Hope it wasn't too meandering, um, but it is. It really it, by getting in touch with your body and your spirit and making you really. It's hard to be ill when when you're in sync inside. The only other thing is what kind of food are you eating. But if you really, it, I, I have to admit, you can transmute a lot of, a lot, not all, a lot of garbage um, when you're in a good state. But uh, basically, I mean, I, I've had people who see me go, oh my God, you're eating garbage. And I said, well, yeah, when you, if you have a really good diet and suddenly you throw a little bit of trash in there, it's like the body can handle it. When you live on trash, that's when, the, that's when you, will, you will have illness. And uh, no amount of herbs and crystals or anything is going to help an illness that is really fork to mouth disease. So, I mean, that's, we, monitoring what we put into our bodies is hugely important, especially today. I mean, once upon a time, you could just argue about whether it's vegetarian or just kind of diet high fat, low fat. Now it's just really, do you eat poison or do you not eat poisonous? And as, as icky, as organic has gotten a little bit because the US government got involved in it. Um, it's still the highest quality food that you can buy. And, um, and it's almost the only guarantee of nutrition and not being GMO, not some, you know, apparently Walmart or some other sleazy place, you know, occasionally was selling it, not um, quality produce. I go to a place where you could, you couldn't get away with it. I mean, the difference between real produce and and the other stuff if you were to give me the other stuff i would know it instantly i would first of all i'd be where's the flavor um there there really are there's some really there are very real differences between them not to mention one supports supportable agriculture and not poisoning streams and all kinds of other not killing the soil and the other one kills the soil and poisons the streams and and feeds businesses that would really be better off with a, a little less discretionary spending cash. All right, I guess I'm gonna uh, wrap that up. Um, I know I said that once before. I just wanna make sure I'm, I'm not ending it with it. It's just the keys, the keys to health is understand that you need to be in balance and eating is part of that balance. Um, going to doctors, if you 
I think that's wise, but when you go to doctors, you are stepping into a belief system. Um, and you're stepping into a system that if you don't believe them, expect to be, you know, you can expect to be abused. There are people who that does not run for, there are real humans all over the place. Unfortunately, even real humans often will just fall into lockstep and just do what they're expected to because there's a pension waiting in the future and there's a family waiting today. So uh, people do the things they think they need to do and we get the results of people doing what they think they need to do. Anyway, so take care of yourself, um, play with play with the crystals, learn a little about herbs, essential oils are brilliant and you can get decent ones, go to, if on um, Amazon, all you have to do is look, read the reviews because there are a lot of knowledgeable people these days and they'll kind of give you the scoop. If somebody, if you read something, oh it smells nice, oh you know, you know, they like it, okay, it's good, that's not, you look for the, look for the reviews that let you know that, you know, they've been around and they can vouch that this is, this is a good a good quality or you know a good person a good company to get your oils from because some there are there are different levels there are really aromatherapy oils and then there are oils that are made like to put into products and they are they are mass produced they're um, usually because they're they're cooked so high they're not they're a lot of the finer chemicals have been have been killed so there's just you know but again it's not hard to to, to really do it this no you can do it and um, especially, like I said, read people. You can these days. I mean, that's what the thing about the net. We're all telling each other. We're our own reviewers. We're independent reviewers, and you can tell by a review if somebody's knowledgeable. Or like I said, like somebody goes, "Oh, it's really nice." Whatever. Again, that's perfectly valid. It's very nice. But you know, you 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 can kind of find out where you're going to get what you need to know if you're spending your money wisely. Um, and the, to me, the wisest way to spend your money is on always good quality food and if it's not organic you can't know it's good quality it doesn't mean that it isn't good quality I to me I don't need certified organic I don't need paperwork with my food I'm not buying a thoroughbred right now the organic just is unfortunately become the odd way of doing things the you know n the not normal way so it's so it's become this freak as opposed to the fact that organic is actually traditional growing but until we start getting traditional, organic is a boutique product, and um, <clears throat> and the rest is take a chance. So that you know, take care of your health. Eat well. Think well. Think good thoughts. Use the gifts of nature, like herbs and crystals and essential oils, and and trans state. Trans state is a gift of nature. Work it. Know your chakra. You know, start, learn a little bit about chakras and understand these are portals that you want to be familiar with. Do little meditations. You know. Do the colors. Do in there just like, you know, imagine green around your heart. Get a really good green. Just feed it. You know, if you want, start at the bottom. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, dark blue, and then, you know, purple there. And uh, work, you know, just use that, use, you know, when you're starting to get anxious or something, you know, maybe, you know, pick a, feel where the energy is and then go for the color there. You know, like I said, often a lot of the anxiety is in the pit of your stomach. Think yellow. If you got one of these, Put it right there and feel it just start to unwind right away. Okay, hope that was useful. I was a little tired tonight. I've been tired a lot lately, but it doesn't make me want to stop doing my videos. Before all else, I see the God within you.